guys, I want to just talk you through a couple of the key things I needed you to get out of the Match My Parabola Desmos activity. I noticed that there were some common areas of mistakes and some uh, multiple questions I got in the same area. So I just want to quickly go through. This is what you have seen. Um, you're typing in a parabola. This was to remind you that y equals x squared. This was all about parabola, right? This is the parent function, y equals x squared here. And then it asks you to work with this. So you have already learned about horizontal translations, and that's what this question is asking. Who is correct? Okay, well, it's x minus 3. So does that move the parabola to the left to be the blue? Or does it move it to the right to be the red? And the answer is, horizontally, it's the opposite direction than you think. So it would be the red graph. It wouldn't go to negative 3. It would go to positive 3. So Jenny would be right. And then I asked you to type something in. Many of you skipped this, so please don't skip this. This is where I can really take a read through your answers and see if you get it. This is part of a set being assessed, okay? So don't skip these kind of things. Um, and the answer was because we do move the opposite direction than it says in the equation. Um, we're going to move three to the right. Okay, this is slide number five. And all it was asking you to do was to change this around to match up with what's already there. Okay, plot five parabolas. So if I want to go through the, the vertex here in the middle, so they're all going through zero, zero, then I need to make uh, it through blue. So this is going to be like a guess and check at first. You can also try to calculate what the step pattern would be. So here I'm going one, two, three, four, five over. And normally if I go five to the right or five to the left, I would go 25 up because it's five squared. But in this case, I only go one, two, three, four, five. So I went five out of 25. So if I take five divided by 25, that's the same as one fifth X squared. Okay, so that would be what would match my blue one. If I keep going, my green graph, um, I'm not gonna do all of these because I don't think it's worth our time here. But the goal is that at the end of the day, you understand where this A value comes from, okay? You're gonna check your work and it will show the graphs. If it's wrong, don't, prob don't worry about it. Reset it, try again, and figure out what your misunderstanding was. Um, another slide that I was asked about, so that's about this one. We've talked about this and it would show you right away if you got it correct. And then I wanna go through seven with you. And this was this one was definitely a guess and check because you haven't seen this format yet. It's trying to slowly introduce you to this. And so hopefully you played with it a little bit. Again, it was just guess and check, play around. Um, and you would have noticed that if you tried to like just change the number in front, okay, well, that's not actually gonna help me too much. Let's try like a fraction here. Uh, no, so that didn't make my red one any wider or anything like that. So if you kept playing around, you would have seen that, okay, well, actually, if I make inside of the brackets the same as the x-intercept that I want, then it will actually go through. So we see that my red value here, my red parabola goes through. But the trick is it's the opposite sign, just like the other horizontal shifts were the opposite sign. So to do the blue one, okay, well, I want the x-intercept to be these black dots. So that's at negative four and positive three. So in here, I'm gonna do positive four and negative three, and it will just make it go through there. So this is actually called x-intercept form, and we will continue to learn more about this later. Okay, so that's how you do slide seven. Next, and then the next couple ones, these were just do you understand? Now, if I look at each set of these colored things. I notice that they all have the same step pattern. One over, one up. Orange, one over, one down. Green, one over, one down. Sorry, one up. One over, one down. One over, one up. So my A value for all of these is going to be one. Just some of them open up and some of them open down. So I need to um, get a parabola that matches with that. So there are two ways you can do it. You can do it with a vertex form that we've already been working with and um, try to figure out, okay, so I know that my A is one, so let's do the red one first, which is this one over here. I'm gonna be shifting the graph over here to six negative, so that's gonna be X. I write positive six in my equation, and then I'm gonna be shifting it down one, okay? 
Now I'm going to check my work, just make sure, oh yeah, I got it right. Uh, but I need to finish the rest of these equations too. So all I'm going to do is be taking these and changing my vertex point, changing this here and this here, okay, my H and my K. And then sometimes I'm going to need to put a negative at the front if it opens down. So let's just do um, this orange one here. So in this case, my vertex for orange is this spot. So that's 3, 1. So y equals x minus 3 squared plus 1. But I also can see that I need to go down from my vertex. So I can see that that matches there. So we're just plugging in your h and your k, identify where the vertex is for each one, and use that for your points. Okay, so that was slide 8. Slide nine, plot five parabolas with the same x-intercepts. Now, from a couple slides ago, we remembered that my x-intercepts are all going to be x plus four and x minus four. Okay. So there's this one. But if I need the red to go through here, I can keep working around to see by guessing and checking. So I know that I want it to be it's going to have to open down to go through here. So I need to figure out what my A value is going to be. So we can just plug something in and see if it works. X plus 4, X minus 4. Okay, let's check that. Oops, I, I meant this to be for the red. So negative 10. Did that work? Oh, so my I noticed that my vertex is too high. So let's try something smaller. Let's do half of that. Oh, look at that. It went through 80. That This was purely guess and check, okay? Now, you can count the step pattern like before, but the scale on this graph doesn't really help us. The Y is, doesn't go up by one. So you're going to go through those. It will tell you if you are correct or not. Um, let's just quickly do the blue first. If the vertex is up here, then I know that it opens down. So there's a negative, and I've got to figure out, okay, it goes through 48, so I know that it's going to be smaller than going through my 80, so let's just try two, not too small, about two and a half. Still too small. So what's great about using this graphing program, you don't have to guess, oh, there we go, it went through the right point, so there we are. Okay. Um, and then the last slide that was requested to go through was slide 10. It says, which one will match the graph shown? And you notice that I have my two brackets. This is factored form, which you have learned how to do, but we haven't graphed them yet. So you should have gotten through this activity that my x-intercepts are going to be what I see in my brackets. So this is negative 2, so I'm looking for positive 2 here. So that's positive 2. These two aren't good because they say negative. Uh, and this one is positive 5, the point, so I put negative 5. So it's either the first option or the last. And then the question is, does it open down or does it open up? And in this case, it opens up. So you were just going to type that in for me. The x-intercepts are in the bracket with the opposite sign. And the parabola opens up. So that's why you picked your answer. Done. All right. So um, this question here, slide 11, is asking you to do one in vertex form, which is y equals a x minus h squared plus k. And the second one was that second um, factored form or x-intercept form. And you haven't learned this yet, so don't be worried about it. We're definitely going to go through um, R and S. So these just represent my x-intercepts. So don't panic. It was just kind of a guess and check for the second one. So no big deal. Okay, so a quick video, less than 10 minutes of just going through Desmos and making sure you got the most out of that activity. Thanks a lot.